What's going on swim fans? In this video, I'm doing a full analysis on my backstroke technique. We're gonna be looking at my stroke above the water, below the water, comparing it at different speeds, and along the way, sharing a few different drills so that you can apply this to your own swimming. Now for me, backstroke is actually my worst stroke, but there are still many ways that we can work on improving it. So let's go ahead and get right into it, focusing on a few different angles. Right there, we have the streamline push off the wall into the stroke. Now I wanna talk about the underwater dolphin kick because when you do the underwater dolphin kick, it's really important that you kick in two directions. There's an up kick and a down kick. So I'm actually gonna pause it right there. So if I were to draw a line that kind of goes through my body like a curve, you actually can see that there's propulsion in both the up direction and in the down direction. Uh, right here, I actually look like I'm bending my knees a little bit too much. And actually when you're on your back and you're doing the dolphin kick on your back, it's actually easier because you have gravity to pull your legs down on the weaker part of the kick. So when you think about like kicking a soccer ball or a football, you actually have a lot more strength when you're kicking in that direction. But when it comes to kicking the other way, when you use your hamstrings, your glutes, and your lower back, you're actually a lot weaker. So it's really important, and I'm gonna talk about this again later on in the video when we look at the stroke. So there's the underwater dolphin kick. There's the initial stroke. It's actually gonna be a lot easier to look at the stroke from this angle here. This is our slowest speed. This is about a 130 pace per 100. And then we're gonna put it in super slow motion. And we're gonna look at it in all the different speeds and start to break it down. So there's the streamline, there's the dolphin kick. We're actually gonna pause it again. So if we can imagine that curve running through our body, we wanna be like a dolphin, literally. So fun fact, the, the black marlin can go over 100 kilometers an hour underneath the water. And the way that you know, a marlin or a sailfish can go that fast because literally from end to end, they're using that surface area to propel them through the water. And that's why the dolphin kick is so important. It's like the fifth stroke and in backstroke, it's extremely important. So let's go ahead and break down the mechanics of the catch of the pull. So right there, we're getting into the early vertical form. So you can sort of see like where my elbow is. It's almost like a freestyle stroke, but you're on your side. So you have your hand in freestyle at least, and you initiate that high elbow, it's that early vertical form. Now for me, I mentioned backstroke's my worst stroke, and for, for an experienced coach with a trained eye, and they look at my stroke, they can see, yeah, this guy is not a backstroker, because it takes me a long time to actually get into my early vertical form. So we're gonna go ahead and play that, and you'll see what I mean on the next stroke cycle. So I, I have, keep an eye on the hand that's about to enter the water. So I enter the water with my pinky first, that's how you enter in backstroke, and then right there is when I actually initiate that catch. So we'll watch on one more stroke cycle. It takes me like a, almost a meter or half a meter to actually get into that early vertical form. So right there, so I mentioned the pinky enters the water. This is pretty good. I could get a little bit more hip rotation to get the body rotated onto the side. And my favorite drill to do that is single arm backstroke. So that's where you literally just take strokes in this position that I'm in right now. So your arm is down and you're only taking strokes with your opposite arm. And then right here, it takes me until about right here to actually get into that early vertical forum. And ideally you get into this early vertical forum as soon as possible. Just like in freestyle, you wanna initiate that catch as quickly as you can into the stroke. And so for me, I'm a little bit slow at that. Single arm backstroke always helps me. It's a more difficult drill, so if you wanna throw on fins, that'll help you out with that. And then get that rotation to the other side. Now, one thing I wanna talk about here in the slower speed, let me see if I can squeeze in. Actually, we're gonna go back. <laughs> we're gonna go back right here. I wanna talk about the amplitude of my kick. So the amplitude of the kick, I have too big of an amplitude. We're gonna pause it right there. I'm gonna sort of get out of the frame right here for you guys. So if you look at what's happening here from my bottom of my kick to the top of the kick, that's the amplitude. So I'm bending my knees a little bit too much and that means I'm creating a lot of unnecessary drag. So that drag is gonna slow me down and you'll see when I get to faster speeds, the kick amplitude actually gets slower. So right here, bending my knees a little bit too much, you should be consciously aware of this when you kick, whether it's streamline on your back or with a kickboard. Just pay attention to that. So now this is a little bit faster. I'm moving at about 115 pace per 100 meters. And this is like my medium to fast speed. I mentioned backstroke, I'm not good at it. So I have to actually try very hard to make it look somewhat coherent. Whereas some people who are more natural on their back, they can make it look easy. So another thing that I wanna talk about that, that I should be improving is not just the amplitude of my kick. So you can see 
right here, I have a slightly smaller kick. It's good, it's better, it's not great, but I wanna draw a line from like my toe right here all the way to my head. And so you can see that it's, it's at an angle and that's determined by your head position. So if I'm able to rest my head back just a little bit more, it's gonna bring my legs up higher in the water. And so for me, it looks, this looks pretty severe. Like, wow, my legs are really sinking and I'm moving at about a 115 pace and my legs are like completely underwater. And if you look at a swimmer who's moving at maybe like a two minute pace, you know, the legs are about a meter underneath the surface of the water. So, you know, and even if you watch like a really, really fast swimmer, that's really the difference between someone like myself and another swimmer, the legs are just gonna be a little bit higher in the water. And that's really set by your head position. So a great drill that I like to do is where you swim backstroke with a cup right on your forehead and you have to try and balance. So if you ever get a chance, get a cup or a water bottle, fill it up and then put that on your head, really focus on leaning and resting your head back and that'll bring your legs up. Works on stability, it's an amazing drill. I have decent rotation. I mentioned single arm backstroke drill. That's a good one for rotation. And you notice I'm starting to get a little bit faster and I'm creating more bubbles with my hand entry. So I'm entering the water with my pinky, I'm exiting with my thumb. That's, you know, when you're learning backstroke, that's important, you exit with your thumb enter with your pinky. And now let's get into the full speed where I think I'm going about a minute pace per 100 meters, which is pretty much the fastest I can go. I can't really go any faster than that. So here's full speed backstroke. Here we go. Oh, I can't look. <laughs> there it is. So it looks a little bit better actually because the amplitude of the kick is a little bit smaller because it has to be because the tempo is faster. So when you look at this right here, it's like, okay, this isn't terrible, right? A little bit too much of a knee bend. We want the head the head is fine, but the legs are a little bit low. If you think about this, like this bottom foot right here, this bottom foot is too deep for sprint backstroke. Like, you know, oh, this is like lazy backstroke, but for me, this is sprint. The amplitude should be a little bit smaller. The legs should be a little bit straighter. It's good that I'm pointing my toes. I don't have great foot flexibility. That's an area I can definitely improve. And then if we look at my, my hand entry, see all those bubbles? those bubbles are slowing me down. So that's not good. I don't want to have bubbles. When you're going fast, you're going to have bubbles, you know, splash and dash, 50 freestyle. But the more you can minimize that and have a cleaner stroke, the better it's going to be. Uh, ideally, I have a little bit more hip rotation. I want to get into that early vertical forearm as soon as possible. I'm a little late. So you can see right here, I have a clear hold on the water, but there's a lot of bubbles in the way. You can barely see it. And that can be cleaned up significantly. But you know, when you're going fast, there's going to be some chaos. And if you can organize that chaos, it's going to be a lot faster. Um, if you want to swim faster in backstroke, you have to train faster. And that's really one of the biggest mistakes that swimmers make in backstroke is just not going fast enough. Because you're on your back, you feel like you can be lazy and just kind of float around. No, no, that's not good. That's actually one of the reasons I think my backstroke has always been pretty bad. Not only have I always been uncomfortable on my back, but when I swim backstroke, I normally do it slow. I'm barely ever training it with any kind of intensity. It's normally recovery and you can't do that. You have to train it. So here it is at three different speeds. The middle is 130 pace. And you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments, which one is 120 pace, which one is the, the minute pace. Actually, I don't think any of them are 120. So 130, 115 and minute. Those are the three paces. The middle is the 130. If you enjoyed this analysis, you're going to love the analysis I did on freestyle technique where I actually had four different speeds and I break it down for you guys. So make sure you check it out. Happy swimming and I'll catch you guys over there.